Hello everybody, I recently purchased a new workbench and I'm going to give you a little tour of it. That's coming up right now on Creative Rails. So I recently purchased this off of Kijiji. I went online and did some searching and looked for a while and I finally found the perfect one. What this is, is an old oak roll top desk. And there's a few reasons why I wanted one of these. First of all, I wanted it to mimic an old agent's desk in a train station because I wanted to double this desk as not only my workbench but as an operating desk for doing operations. I also wanted the roll top so it can close when I have a mess in there, I can close it and it hides the mess and it kind of keeps the clutter away. So it keeps my wife happy and uh, happy wife, happy life. So anyways, let's go over uh, to the workbench and I'm going to give you a tour. Let's go right now. Okay, so here it is. This is my new workbench and it says right on there, I don't know if you can read it, but it does say 1961. So I'm gonna back out here so you can get an overall view of it. So the beauty of the roll top is if I have a mess under there when I'm working I can just close it up and people don't have to look at my clutter. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. If I can't get it I'll have to just pause it. And there it is. I just paused it to open it. Anyways, if you're wondering what these doodads are here, these are my new work lights that I got off of Amazon. So I just turn them on like that. And they've got brightness adjustment on them. I can move them, I can bring them over and around. Uh, I'll put a link on the description below to show you where you can get these. I'm gonna turn my other one on right here. There you go, so here is my workspace. As you see, I've got all these drawers, sliding doors and everything like that. So I'm gonna start with a little tour. So back here, I have all my paints. I got my weathering powders down here, Solva set. There's my Badger Model Flex that the um, Railroad Colors was telling you about before all lined up there. In the back I got some decal prep and stuff like that. Some old flow quill paint, stuff like that. Over here I have a little caddy that my little girl made in daycare for Father's Day and there I keep all of my glues. Right here is my mat and just some glues I was working on. Here's my jar that you've seen before. It's got my tweezers in there. Exacto knife, and here are my paint brushes. We will move down here, and in this drawer, I have my tools, um, trip pin, coupler trip pin pliers, and you know my screwdrivers. And here I've got clamps, NMRA gauge. Back here, I've got sandpapers. And then I have another drawer here. This is kind of my scratch building supply. So I got styrene and stuff like that. I've got detail parts in here, all organized. And the things is where I keep also like my wheels and couplers and those little organizers. And down here is more scratch building supplies. So I keep sprues and spare stuff like that, brick sheets, wood, spare bits and pieces. Then my center part, I gotta get an organizer for this. But in this drawer is where I keep pens. I've got, uh, these are like some 
chalk that I scrape up from weathering as well. Some paint brushes and just it's kind of a mess. I need to organize this still. Over here, this is my project spin. So I'm gonna build some more of these dividers like this. And for an example, I've got a steam engine that I'm scratch building a boiler for uh, right here. It's an old Varney chassis and yeah, I'm gonna build a boiler and put it on there. So that's a project there. So what I'll do is divide this up into sections and have my different projects in there. Keep everything kind of organized in all the little bits. Now this drawer is kind of deceiving because it's super big. And in here is where I keep all my acrylic paints. So these are like the primary colors I was talking about. Brown, um, black and white, then blue and yellow and all that. And then I've got other things over here like Mod Podge, Matte Medium, common spray paints I use right here. My matte varnish. These are those plastic cups I was telling you about before. Uh, what's this? Oh, that's alcohol right there. Spray glue, stuff like that. And way back here is where I keep all my tools. So in there I've got my Dremel, my soldering iron, uh, my digital measuring gauge and all that. Now, the other cool thing about this desk is the plan is I'm also going to use this for operations. And you're probably thinking, oh, you're crazy. It's going to be a huge mess on here. How are you going to do that? But if you look under here, let's say the desk is a mess. I can pull out this writing board to write on to do paperwork. And I have another one right here. So I'm going to give you a little tour also of my paperwork and how I store all that. So I've got this drawer here. In here I've got my weigh bills and empty car bills. This is I learned this from a guy named Trevor Marshall. Uh, you'll have to give him a check out. Uh, his he's, um, blog's called The Model Railway Show. Really cool guy and he's got some really good ideas. This one wasn't his original idea but he's the one where I learned it from and I've kind of adapted it to my own uh, liking, but that's where that came from. So that's the way bills. I'm gonna sh do a, a, a series on that later on, on my way bills and how I do it. Cause I don't do car cards. I do, you know, realistic way bills. These here are something I picked up from Ron's trains and things. So what these are, the car deficiency check cards. So when you're doing, let's say uh, a brake test, something like that, you can go through these you would pick a card and you can see here it says your train is free from deficiencies and mechanical failures failures you are clear to proceed now there's a hundred cards in here in this pile but there's 10 deficiency cards so there's a 10 percent chance that you can pull something like this so if you pull this car it says third car back from locomotive has a broken coupler cut car from drain and move to repair and place track so that's exactly what you'd have to do you'd take that move it to the repair and place track and then you'd have to come over here to the agent's desk and get one of these and these are bad order slips and you'd fill this out and this is a I made this one too I made it on Excel it's an exact copy of the Canadian National um, bad order flag and you'd attach this to the way bill and leave it on the um, appropriate track where the um, cars to be replaced would be the repair and place track. In here I have my switch list. So what will happen on my railroad is you will take your way bills and then make your crew will be responsible for making your own switch list. So I actually found um, some copies of these online. So this is an actual switch list, an actual Canadian national switch list which I copied and pasted into Word and just did that, copied it, made three copies on the um, page and printed it out and then I just cut them and they're double sided. They're exactly how they're exactly how they looked in real life. So I'll just throw these back. And I'll just I don't know we can go back in there. And in this part, this part's cool. This opens up here. So right here is where I keep my form 19s. So these are train order forms. There's form 19 and there's form 
31s. So form 19 is something traditionally that could be hooped up to a crew. Um, so they wouldn't have to stop the train to pick up the form. And then a Form 31 is a form where the train would actually have to stop and the crew would actually have to sign off. So it'd be something more significant. So let's say, for an example, an extra was going to be coming at you and you'd have to pull into a siding somewhere. That'd be something quite serious and you'd most likely have to pull over and stop to get that order. So that's a Form 31 right there. And I showed you the form 30 or form 19 just a second ago. And then I also have in here clearance forms. So when a train is put together and it's ready to depart from a station or a terminal, you have to fill out this clearance form. And this is something else I also found from Trevor Marshall. And so I made this myself. I believe it was on Word I made it. I, I looked at some old forms and some, some that he did and did my own on Word. And this is, gives you kind of an example of how that would look. So that goes in there. So if we move down here, that I believe is it for my forms. In here I keep my, I have a lot of decals because I do a lot of custom decaling. So these are my Black Cat publishing decals. I keep them in there. And then in here I keep my micro scale decals. This end slot, I'll probably just keep spare paper, stuff like that. And that will do. So it's not quite ready yet, but that gives you an idea of how it's going to work and how it's going to look. And another thing I'm going to do in the future is I want to get a, an old style phone and set up a communication system so you could talk to different agents on the railroad and um, uh, agents and stations basically and dispatch the trains. So anyways, I hope you liked this video. If you do, please like and subscribe. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. We will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. See you later. Bye-bye.